the gospel. God sends his son into the world, the God-man, really man, really God, really human, really divine, lives a perfect life, fulfills the whole law, dies in the place of sinners intentionally, absorbs all the wrath of God against those who believe in him, takes away all their guilt, forgives all their sins, rises from the dead triumphant over death and hell and Satan, sins, rules with power from on high, will come again, give eternal life, raise from the dead all those who trusted in him. There is no better news. Hey, what's going on, family of God? Welcome to the Morning Devotional with DJ Sam Brock, a.k.a. Brother Sam Lopez, Mr. Sam Lopez. Amen. Listen, God bless you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being a part of what God is doing in this ministry. The gospel. God sends his son into the world, the God-man. In this broadcast, we just like to just invite people to join us to pray, join us to get into the Word of God, join us to let us know what's going on in their part of town, in their situation, in their life, amen, in their neighborhood, in their state, in their country, in their suburb, in their neighborhood, you know, whether you're in an urban setting or if you're in a country setting, all the same, amen, we're all people that need, we're all people who need love, we're all people who need to be validated heard understood amen and we have something to say and listen when there's a question amen i don't just answer the question i answer the person who asked it there's a person behind the question the questioner amen and that's a respect that i learned as knowing that we are all created in the image of god amen but only through jesus can we be called children of god is a difference so of course of course god created all things amen or you can read that account in the book of Genesis, in the book of beginnings. Amen. So we know that God is the creator and we don't worship the things that are created. We worship the one who created everything. Amen. And I know this is a time right now during this coronavirus, a pandemic, during the quarantine, I call this a quarantine stream. Amen. That we need to gather up together and we need to work this thing out. We need to communicate. We need to have relationships. Amen. That matter. And the only way that it will matter if you have someone in the center of the relationship between you and the other person, between me and you, someone who is holy, someone who is truth, someone who is pure, someone who is full of mercy and grace, someone who is just, amen, someone who is full of power, someone who has no limits, someone who loves us unconditionally, and his name is Jesus Christ. If you never met him, I introduce you to him right now as my Lord and Savior, amen, the one who changed me and transformed me and renewed me, gave me a new heart and a new mind, amen, according to what he did in my life and back in 2001 when it was all fun and games that I thought it was all fun and game, but it wasn't. I had to literally start learning as soon as I got saved how to throw off the old person, how to throw off the old things that were in my life, amen, and I'm trying to get to my notes and hopefully it'll pop up. So I'm going to give you a minute. We're going to pray, though. Then I'm going to give you a minute to share this video out because today we're talking about how to throw off the old. Do you need to throw off the old? What do you need to throw off today? You know, a lot of us are not working right now. A lot of us are working from home. A lot of us are, you know, unemployed right now. A lot of us are concerned and worry is coming. A lot of people have been affected by this COVID-19 family members, um, you know, been affected, infected. Amen. So these are tough times, man. It's not easy. But what I am saying is that now that things have slowed down, I don't know about your part of town, but my part of town has slowed down tremendously. Uh, sometimes I don't even know when I wake up, I don't even know what day it is. Amen. Because things are not the same as usual. My routine has completely changed. Um, you know, very few things that remain the same. Amen. But many things have changed and especially in my time schedule. Amen. So I try to stay dedicated to the morning devotional as I can, as the time allows. Amen. And God has allowed me to do it. 
um, thus far, so far. Amen. I hope you're blessed. And um, if you are blessed, that's why I give everybody a minute to share this out to somebody that you may think would never listen to the gospel message. But I'm believing God will reach those people. As a matter of fact, that is my target. Those who these people think would never come to Jesus or would never listen to the gospel or never give attention to the word of God. Those are the people that I target because I was once that person. Amen. And if God could transform me and change me and renew me, I'm totally 100% convinced he could do that for anybody. Amen. So let's pray. I know there's, I know there's a lot going on, a lot of families uh, being touched by this. Amen. There's some, some have uh, financial needs. Others are dealing with sickness and pain and all kind of anxiety, all kind of, you know, emotions welling up, suicidal thoughts. This is serious. This is a time where we need to be praying. We need to be diligent. We need to be available to, for one another to help out one another. Amen. It's not a time to slander people. It's not a time to backbite. It's not a time to hate on each other. This is a time to love up on each other. Amen. And to find a way to, you know, relate to one another when it comes to the truth, when it comes concerning God. Amen. It's not a time to, you know, try to debunk Christianity. I'm not going to try to debunk any other religion out there. No, I will call out what needs to be called out. Amen. According to the scriptures, but I won't use this time that I have um, to waste anybody else's time. Amen. In other words, I don't want to waste words. I will only repeat what the word says. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today, for now, for this minute, for this hour, for this second, Lord God. I pray for every single viewer right now in the name of Jesus, the viewers who are on now and the viewers who will be on later on, Lord Jesus. I pray peace upon their lives. I pray peace to their minds. I anoint them right now with spiritual oil in the name of Jesus. And I ask, Lord God, you would do a great work in their hearts and minds. Holy Spirit, move in this morning devotional. I ask, Holy Spirit, God, that you would touch every single person. Lord God, that you would give them financial breakthrough, health breakthroughs in their body, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I pray for Arcane angels and ministering angels, the host of heaven, to move concerning all your children, all your people, Lord God, that are in need right now. I pray, Lord God, healing power to come against this COVID pandemic, Lord God. I come against crookedness and deception in the government and our leadership and everything that goes on in the medical field that is not right, Lord God, I call upon your holy light, Lord Jesus, to reveal and expose that in the name of Jesus. And I pray for, Lord God, victorious angels to have the weapons of warfare that is necessary to break everyone out of the shackles of sin, pain, and deception. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So what do you need to throw off today? Let's find out together through a scripture that I found that God gave me but I'll give you a minute right now to share this out to everybody. I'll be right back. Amen. Fastest 60 seconds on the internet, right? It seems so fast when we do that. First of all, let me just remind you as a follower of Christ, during this time that everything's slowing down, you might be facing the toughest challenge of your life during this time. And it might not be what you're thinking. It might not be the finances. It might not be the quarantine. It might not be the COVID-19. It might be your very own self. Amen. You might be struggling with thoughts now that are greater than they ever have been. You know, when I'm busy, I have less time to think and dwell about things that I should not be thinking and dwelling about, if you know what I'm saying. When you're busy going about doing good, when you're busy going about doing work, when you're busy going about helping other people and ministry, family first all the time, I would say. And listen, 
those mind things and those parts of your mind that um, you won't even realize is there sometimes when you're about doing business, you know, kingdom business, regular business, secular business, amen, because you're busy and you're occupied. But what happens when everything slows down like it's slowing down now? Then what happens? Is it a time for you to remain, um, you know, just in confined to the four walls of your home or amen? So you just be locked up in a room, um, like in a ball, you know, just laying down all day or sleeping all day. Is that a time for that? I don't think so. And it's not healthy to do that. But what I am saying, sometimes our biggest challenge when things slow down and when we have less to do is right here in our minds. So let me just remind all the believers first, and then I'll get to the people who have not put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But let me talk to my brothers and sisters in Christ for now. Amen. No condemnation, first of all. We find out in Romans 8, verses 1 and 4. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of life, of the life-giving spirit, has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. First of all, remind yourself that you're freed from the power of death because you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have in the form of a man of the scriptures, of the versions of the scripture says. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Amen. So no condemnation. If you're struggling in patterns that you, you might have thought you've been done with a long time ago and it's starting to creep back in. Amen. It might be because there's unsettled business in your life that you were so busy and I was so busy that we didn't realize that those things were still there. They were never handled. They were never plucked from the root. Amen. They were never taken off. They were never thrown off. Amen. And what do we need to throw off today? That's the question for this morning devotional. So how did, how did, or how does Jesus free us? How did he free me? Amen. He came to my hurt. He came to my pain. He came to my anxiety. He came to my, my suffering. He came to my, you know, whatever I thought I had, he came to that thing. Amen. He came to my desperation. He came to me, amen, to show me the truth, to free me from the shackles of sin and death and all that, amen, from the world system. I was entangled up with all of that. He came to where I was to bring me on a journey to where he is, amen. That's how Jesus freed me. How did he free you? You, you know how he freed you, amen. You have a time, you have a place, you have a moment in, in your history, amen that you know that you changed and God did a work in your life. Which part of this, what we just read in Romans chapter eight, which part of this message is most meaningful to you right now? Most meaningful to you right now, amen? What do you need to get from this scripture to realize that you are not condemned, amen? Jesus Christ himself didn't come to condemn the world. He came to free this world. He came to save this world. He came on a mission of freedom, amen? He came on a mission to give us life. He came on a mission of forgiveness. Amen. A lot of people look at Jesus and be like, yeah, he's just judging us. He's just, um, you know, God is always judging. God is always this. God is always that. But you never read the scriptures for yourself. So you believe in popular opinion over the word of God. Amen. So what do you need to throw off today? Today is a new day. I don't know if you noticed. Yesterday is gone. Can't go back there. Amen. Tomorrow is not promised. So we don't know what's, what's ahead. But we have right now right today we have this second this moment in time amen so throw off something that you and i know what we need to throw off what we need to throw off today amen so i just want to remind you that real quick for the believers now the people who don't be believe in jesus you not have yet put your trust in our lord and savior jesus christ my question to you would be what are you waiting for what's the problem what's the issue amen now there could be three things that could be in your life right now that's holding you back from believing in Jesus. Number one could be your own upbringing. You might be in some kind of world system that doesn't allow for Jesus. You might be in a religion that calls Jesus just a good man and a prophet, but he cannot be God. You might be in a situation where you think you're so far away from God's grace that you, your own guilt, your own evil, sinful desires might have you so far 
that you might not know how to get back on a journey or on a path to God. Amen. You might be separated by, you know, people. What, what people have let you down and disappointed you, you might use that as an excuse of why you're not trusting in God. You know, a lot of church hurt goes on. A lot of stories I hear about church hurt is based on another person, not based on what Jesus didn't do because Jesus did it all. If you listen to church hurt or people that used to go to church or they're not going to church because they're calling out the church and calling them hypocrites because they know people that are involved in church and they're still smoking, drinking, having premarital sex, whatever the case may be, they'll start blaming those people for the fact or the reason why they're not going to church or they're not getting closer to God. You know, we need to think that out clear because if I asked you, what do you have against the church? You might have a list like longer than anything. But if I asked you the same thing about Jesus, you know, you know, what's the problem between you and Jesus? You'll probably have less to say. You should have like nothing to say. There is no really problem with the Lord who is perfect. But amen. I understand that. So if you're on the fence, if you're not a believer, you're not trusting in the Lord, especially during this time, you think he's punishing us or you think this is judgment on the earth. Um, amen. You might, you might want to read those scriptures on those as well. God, Jesus came once and died for all for once, once and done. Amen. Um, he took the punishment that we deserved upon himself on the cross. So therefore the punishment was already dealt. So he, therefore he doesn't have to punish us again and we don't have to be punished again. The punishment was already dealt with at the cross, just in case you didn't know that. So my question to you, if you're not following Jesus, amen, you might have your reasons, amen. And if you want to share them here or if you want to inbox me, you can do that as well. But listen, what is it? Amen. It could be a lot of things. It could be a string of things. It could be, like I said earlier, it could be um, just the life you're living doesn't allow for Jesus, doesn't allow for God. Amen. You might be in some kind of other situation where you're worshiping idols or maybe a devil worship, satanic worship, stuff like that. You might be in Wiccan, witchcraft. You might be a uh, part of Santaria. You might be a part of all these things that you may think that that's all there is to it and you never have time to investigate the claims of Jesus. Well, I suggest that as everything has slowed down, I don't know about your part of the country, your, your town, your area, your state, but over here where I am, it slowed down a lot and it caused a lot of thoughts to start ringing through my head again. Stuff that I haven't thought about in years that are not pleasing to the Lord. So now I know I have to get more into the work. Because the more of the word I put into myself, the more I speak it out my mouth. Amen. The less of the word that I put into my heart and the less of the word that will come out of my mouth. That's just the way God showed me and how he deals with me. Amen. So whatever the reason, I respect those reasons. Amen. But if you start having reason upon reason upon reason, why are you not trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ during this time or any time? If you're not seeking him out, if you're not praying, if you're not doing all those things right now, especially while everything's slowing down. Uh, I read a post earlier that um, a brother said, Look, listen, there'd be 200, 300 people in the church weekly when everything was open. And every week these people would just show up. But now that the churches have to go do live streams, there's only 10, 20 people showing up. He said, now people are starting to show their true colors. Amen. I agree with that because, listen, you could hide out in a big church. Amen like a mega church. It could be three, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000 members. And you can go in there every Wednesday and Sunday or, or Tuesday and Thursday and Sunday, however the church opens. Amen. And you could just hide out. You could get a good word. You could get inspired. You could get all that in you. And then you just walk away the same. Amen. It's possible. I've seen it happen. As a matter of fact, before I got saved, I was part of a mega church. Then I got saved in the mega church. Amen transform but before that i was just playing playing games hiding out among amongst believers amen and trying to learn the church lingo trying to you know play church and all that good stuff amen but it didn't work until i had an encounter with the lord jesus christ personally then i realized what was really going on amen then when i realized that these were true believers these were brothers and sisters in the lord who loved god who would who would you know do so much in my life as time went by amen and then I started realizing that I was wrong by trying to do all that and making excuses and trying to live in one foot in the world, one foot in the church. It doesn't work. You get sliced in half if you try to put one foot in the world and one foot in the church. Amen. So I just wanted to 
challenge you there and remind my brothers and sisters that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And if you're not a believer, amen, what are you waiting for? This is the time right now to seek out the Lord and, Je the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why? Because he made claims, amen. There's the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's a whole scriptures from Genesis all the way to Revelation. In the Old Testament, it speaks forth what Jesus was going to do, prophesying, amen. If you look at all the prophecies that have been completed and the prophecies that have been confirmed, amen, through the scripture, you can't call the Bible an ordinary book. It's too accurate. It's too pinpoint to the prophetic word. Amen. And it's just truth. Amen. Look at it for yourself. Please do yourself that, that favor. Amen. It could lead to something that's incredible in your life. And during this COVID-19, during this whole quarantine, you'll remember the times that you got into the word of God for yourself. Amen. And that you started realizing your identity is only found through God and Christ. Amen. Let's see. See if I could get to the scripture that I wanted to share to you with you guys today. And here it goes. It's in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 to 22. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 and 22. It's in the New Testament. Amen. And this is incredible. And it goes with the question of today. What do you need to throw off today? Amen. And there's a follow-up question I'll ask after I read the scripture. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Let me read that again. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of things that I thought were in the scriptures before I got saved because, you know, I would hear stuff. You know, God only helps those who help themselves. I thought that was in the scripture. Amen. I thought a lot of things were in the scripture that was not really in the scripture. Amen. Um, you know, God, God don't like ugly. I heard, I thought that was in the scriptures. But listen, but that isn't what you learned about Christ. That's what you learned from people. You know, so don't, don't put so much pressure on yourself that you're saying, listen, man, I, I got, I got all this wrong. You know how many things I got wrong, even at, even being saved because I was going on teachings of men rather than teachings from God. Amen. And I just was so lazy in the beginning. I'll say, oh, that's what the preacher said. That must be it. I didn't even go to the scripture sometimes. I didn't take notes. I didn't, I didn't verify. I wasn't like a Berean that would just go and hear the preacher and line that up with what the word is saying. I suggest you do that. Even with me. Amen. Even especially with me, if you're listening, if you're watching and watching, if I'm reading a scripture, go to your scripture yourself. Make sure I'm reading the right thing. Ephesians chapter four, verses 20 to 22. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth, that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life that comes from him. Throw off, throw it off, throw it out. It's garbage. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life. If I have a former life, that means I have a new life now. Amen. The past, you know, things are gone. Future things, I, I don't know yet. I know the future hope of God, though. And all I have right now is the present. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted. What is your former way of life? It's corrupt. Amen. And it's corrupted by lust. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Amen. Uh, have you ever dealt with lust? The Bible says, one of the commandments is, if we look at lust with another person and we lust for them in our hearts, we already have committed adultery. You might be saying, well, I'm not married. That don't, that don't belong to me. Yes. It doesn't matter if you're married or not. Listen, when I became a Christian, I became married to the, to the Lord. Amen. And that sounds crazy to people because of gender issue or whatever. But listen, I'm married twice. Married to the Lord and married to my wife. Amen. So, that, that scripture, when it deals with lust in the Old Testament and the commandments, if you lust, have lust for a person in your heart, you already have committed adultery with that person. Amen. It's, it's our thoughts that sometimes causes us to act. If we don't take care of what's going on up in here, if we don't take our thoughts and take them um, to Jesus so he could captive, hold those thoughts captive, then we're in big trouble. So, our old, our former way of life is 
corrupted by lust and deception. You know, we've been duped, I used to tell people. We've been deceived, we've been tricked, we've been lied to for many years of our lives. Saying that, you know, this, this thing is phony about Jesus, that he never rose from the dead, that the church is full of hypocrites. Listen, the church is full of people, last time I checked, not full of robots. So yeah, there's issues in the church, of course. And why, why wouldn't there be issues in the church? And let me remind you, there's issues in every single religion that you could name or think about. There's no perfect religion. Amen? The only religion that's perfect is when you're dealing with the widows, taking care of the widows, taking care of orphans, feeding the poor, sheltering the homeless. Then you're practicing true religion. Amen? But there's no perfect religion. There's a perfect God. Amen? That transforms us and takes us out of a religion mindset into a relational mindset for one another amen religion can't save you religion don't love you religion is just man's attempt to gain favor with god or man's way to get to god but the gospel message of the lord jesus christ is god's attempt to reach us i'd rather have god's attempt to reach me than my attempt to reach god i can't build a ladder that's um, tall enough amen i can't quote enough scriptures to get me favor with god i can't do enough deeds Amen. I can't knock on a lot, uh, enough doors on a Saturday to try to get myself into the kingdom of God. Amen. I can't work this thing out to benefit anything to gain access into the kingdom. And neither could you. I can't boast about anything that I've done. I can only boast about what the Lord has done in my life. In the, in the lives of so many people that I know and so many people who testify of how Jesus transformed and changed their lives. I'm not the only one that has a changed life because of Jesus. There's millions and millions and millions and millions upon millions of people that can testify that when they got into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that they were radically changed, transformed, renewed, restored, and they're now throwing out all that old stuff. They're throwing it out the, out the doors. It's garbage. Amen. Lust and deception. Why would you want to live with that all your life? Amen. I know a lot of people have ideas about lust and be like, man, I can't, you know, I, lust is not such a bad thing. This, that, and the third. Okay. But when you start confusing lust for love, then you're in danger. Amen. And I'll be honest, before I knew the Lord, I thought everything that I lusted for with a girl, I always thought that was love. Amen. I don't know about you, but I thought lusting was love back in the day before I knew Jesus. And then when I found true love, which is only found in God through Christ, then I was like, I was totally off. I was off. Amen. I need to throw that thing out. So when I got saved, I automatically knew the difference between love and lust. Amen. And I hope you get to realize that too as well. So what do you need to throw off today? It could be a, a bad habit. It could be um, what you're listening to and the music you listen to. It could be the TV shows you watch. It could be the websites that you're not supposed to be on. It could be lying. It could be deception. It could be, you know, worry. Worry could be something you need to throw out today in the name of Jesus. It could be anxiety. It could be suicidal thoughts. It could be so many things. Amen. So many things could have you thinking, okay, this is it for me. This is the way my life is going to be because you don't have the courage or you don't know you have the power to pick that thing up, call it out and throw it out, throw it away, throw it off, get it out of your life. Amen. Now the follow-up question is important too. How can you start that process? Amen. Because I don't know about you, but this whole thing with Christian being a Christian is a process. Amen. I have to decide every day when I wake up that I'm going to trust God. I have to decide every day when I wake up is that I'm going to be faithful to my wife. I got to decide every day that I'm going to be a great dad to my children. I'm going to decide every day that I'm going to live in love and I'm going to live in forgiveness. Amen. And I'm not going to play games. I have to decide that every day. I have to put on the full armor of God every day. I have to put it on. God's not going to put it on for me. Amen. So every day is a process. Amen. Every day process. That sounds like a gospel rap group that I used to listen to every day. But listen, what do you need to throw off today? And the follow up, how can you start that process today, right now? Listen, it could be through a prayer. It could be a simple prayer as, as, as something like this. God, forgive me. Amen. Help me to throw away all this old stuff that doesn't belong in my life empower me give me that hope again give me that that drive again give me that joy again amen ask god speak to him talk to him your communication with god is the most powerful communication you will ever have on this side of eternity 
and on the next side of eternity, you'll face him face to face. Amen. And for all eternity, he'll be revealing a new part of himself for all eternity. That's how big God is. That's how that's how much we can't put God in a book. We can't put God in a box. We cannot. He's he's more than what he gave us in the scriptures. Amen. So some that might sound like some kind of heresy, but there's more to God than what we have in the 66 book Bible. You don't think so? Amen. We'll find out in eternity. Amen. There's more. If if even his miracles, if we had enough paper in the world to write out the miracles that God has done and is doing, amen, I don't know what type of book that would be. We won't be able to finish it for sure. It would be how many trillions and zillions of papers and pages, amen. It's God's mercy, his grace, his love, his miracles, his power, his justice, his holiness, all of that is too much for a book. It's too much for the book, amen. But the power that God gives us and the Holy Spirit got inside of us, amen. He's reminding us of everything that's in here and everything that's coming, amen. And there's going to be so much more. There's so much more, amen, to what God has for us. So throw off the old. That's all I have for you this morning, amen. I hope you have been blessed. I hope you are empowered. I hope you're encouraged, amen. If you need anything, if any way I could help, if I could pray for you, if you have a concern, a request, um, a question, amen, anything like that. Listen, visit my, my website. If you had something that you wanted to express, but since it was not a lot of activity right now, so you didn't want to say anything, you wanted to remain quiet, it's all good, amen. I respect that. Every day is, is a different day for me as well. Sometimes I'm quiet. Sometimes I'm more talkative. Sometimes I want to do more, amen. But listen, if you had something to share, you didn't want to share it, publicly here's my email you could email me or you can inbox me and i'll hold your privacy private amen god bless you pastor jakes amen amen continue doing the work you're doing you're doing amazing work online and with your church body and with your community amen i am inspired by your ministry amen so what else and if you've been blessed amen just want to shout a couple of people out who have been sowing seeds amen you know who you are i don't want to put your name publicly unless you want me to amen but there's been people that's been sowing into the ministry, allowing me to help others in areas that you wouldn't realize that really people need help in. Amen. But by you sowing into this ministry, it's allowing me to sow into other ministries and it's allowing me to help other people in ways that um, we might have been overlooking. Amen. And you're also blessing um, this family, this ministry as well as we move forward with the gospel message. Everything that you see in front of you requires payment. Everything that you see in front of you requires uh, diligence, you know, maintenance, computers, cameras, uh, equipment, subscriptions, pay this, pay that. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord, though. God will provide. And I'm believing that if you sow into this ministry, God will provide a hundredfold, a hundredfold return unto you. Amen. And to your family. Amen. For sure. Amen. That's what I'm believing God. And he has showed me that over and over again. I have to testify. I can't lie and say that God hasn't shown me that. And also, this is my PayPal as well. If you would like to make a donation, they're all, um, you know, tax deductible donations. Amen. And um, it's great to know that God is uh, providing for you, for me, and for the families that are in need. Amen. So let's be the church. Let's gather up together. Let's get our resources together. I'm talking to that person who have an overflow of abundance, financial abundance. Amen. I'm talking to those people, those that person, amen, that's watching. And if that's you, just obey what God is telling you. Because the Bible says in the scripture that when you lend to the poor, when you give to the poor, God will repay you because you're lending to his people. Amen. And then the God that has uh, all the gold and all the silver that owns everything, amen, that you can imagine you're not you're not lending to God. Amen. You know, God doesn't need our finances and need our money. But when he sees you helping others with what you were given, amen, the blessing starts to come back to you and to me. That's that's the way God's economy works. It doesn't work like this economy that we're in, this temporary economy. Amen. And I know we're, you know, this government is trying to do their best to try to bail us out of this situation. Amen. And I'm grateful for, you know, stimulus checks and all that stuff. I'm not going to complain. 
I'm not going to say because I don't think a lot of other countries have that. A lot of countries all over the world don't have that. Um, we have that. We're blessed to have that. But something tells me that somebody has to pay this back. Other generations will be paying this back. Amen. So we have to prepare this generation and the next generation, and the next generation to face things like this when it comes up with the word of God. Amen. Uh, the only way to face a big giant is with a great God. Amen. That, you know, I might not hold the gun, but I hold a God, a God in my heart. Amen. And that's more important. And that's way more powerful than anything like that. God bless you. Thank you um, for the encouragement, Pastor Jakes. Amen. So I'm out of here. I hope you're blessed. Amen. I'll continue to pray for your family. Please pray for my family. And let's pray for families um, to the left, to the right of us, the north, to the south. Amen. Let's pray for each other during this time. We need the power of prayer. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And we need that availeth much to reach heaven. So that way that availeth much will come down to earth to bless others in a way that they need the blessing to encourage others, to hold each other up during this time. This is not the easiest time right now for a lot of people. <clears throat> Some people are like basking in the sunshine right now. Praise the Lord. Some people are in the muck and mire. Praise the Lord. Some people need help. Praise the Lord. Some people don't need help. Praise the Lord. In each way, any situation you find yourself in, I suggest that you praise God right now. Amen. Because we're alive and we have hope in him. And we could trust that he will never leave us nor forsake us, but he would give us what he promised in his word. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you for coming through. And next time, um, until the next time, Lord willing, we'll have another morning devotional. Amen. Stay tuned for tonight's Bible study, The Blaze, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Lord willing, that will be up tonight and we'll get together again very soon. Amen. Pray for me. I'm praying for you. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace. Blazing Bible studies.